everybody, it's me, Margaret, and without the recent talk about crochet hooks, I realized that there was some stuff I needed to know. For instance, why do some people prefer the boy type of hook, you know, the way the head is, versus the Susan Bates type of hook? It's just, I'm just curious. And so I threw myself into researching, and I learned a lot about crochet hooks that I thought I would share with you today. And essentially, you got two textbooks. One is a website called Nardagurumi. She does a lot of Amagurumi stuff that is um, very interesting. You probably want to check that out too after this. And then Crochet Cabana, which is kind of a catch-all site about crochet. Both of these are great, and I'm going to be jumping between the two sites as I sort of point out uh, the information that clarifies the different types of crochet hooks. So let's jump right in. Okay, I'm going to start us off here at Crochet Cabana. There's a section called All About Hooks, and I'll put the link in the description box so you can easily click on it to see, read for yourself. But she basically tells us that there are two types of hooks, inline and tapered. Now she refers to them as bait and boy, baits being Susan Bates, of course, and that would be your inline. Boy would be the one she calls tapered. Now here I've zoomed in on the picture she provides on her site to show you what she means by the tapered and inline. Notice that on the, bet, the uh, boy hook, here's the staff down here, and then it tapers in towards the head. But on the Susan Bates, here's the staff down here, and it remains in line with the staff and the head. And that's what she's referring to, but the Nardagurumi site shows you a different angle of these two hooks. Now as we pop over here to Nardagurumi, she gives us a great picture that show, or two pictures actually, that show us what in line and what she says is not in line. That would be tapered either way. For example, this inline, you can clearly see that the hook does not extend past the staff. Therefore, it is in line with the staff. Whereas the, the baits is a not in line or a tapered hook, it extends beyond the side of the staff. So my hypothesis on this is which one we prefer is probably based on the way in which we hold the hook and crochet. Now we're back at the Crochet Cabana website and I want you to see this diagram where she talks about the different parts of a, a hook. Okay, at the top, this part that we usually call a hook can be called the head, the hook, or the point. I did not know that. Then this part right here is called a throat. Now, I really need a name for the part that extends up under the head because I really like the baits being, uh, it's deeper under there. I guess I'll call it the chinny chin chin because that's exactly what it seems like to me, under the chin chin chin. But they call this part the throat, and here's where she points out the difference between a tapered and an inline or whatever. Okay, so you've got your shaft next. This is a boy, by the way, and this is a Susan Bates. Um, your grip or your thumb rest. So I think technically you're supposed to hold it that way. I don't. <laughs> I hold mine way down here at the handle. Now, I'm assuming that these are uh, improportionate to one another in real life. So... I don't know why she would make one smaller than the other unless that was true. So it looks like the Susan Bates is a little bit shorter than the boy. But I thought that was interesting. Now also on the Crochet Cabana site, I'd encourage you to, to read this about the materials that the handles could be made out of. Um, well, actually the whole hook because some are steel, some are aluminum, some are wood, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she talks a whole lot um, at length about these and why you might prefer one over another. And um, I would encourage you to read that because I just think it's interesting. And here is a few examples of um, basic ones. But, now on the Nerdigurumi site, 
she reviews 11 hooks talking about uh, their head and their handles and how light they are and all the things you might want to know. So I would suggest reading these if you're in the market for a new hook. Now I'd encourage you to read the details on these uh, two websites. For example, that she on um, Nardagarumi gives you a review of each of the hooks that she had outlined. And here's that collage square hook I'd never heard about. Um, you'll notice that it is not recommended. And she gives you the reasons why. It's just something that she doesn't think is um, very well made and yada yada yada. But Certainly, before you go out and purchase any of these hooks, look up the reviews. I think it's a great idea. Now, I've also included on the Nerdigarumi site this handy chart. It's a link to this chart, which will tell you um, the type of yarn and then the, the different hook that is best for that yarn. And it's printed on the yarn label, too, of course, but I just thought this overall view is kind of interesting. We have Canada and the UK who just kind of share the same system apparently. We have the US and we have Japan listed here. Now interesting enough, we thought we didn't have all the hooks. Poor Japan really got shortchanged. But um, the reason she has these highlighted in green is because this is her amigurumi site and she features all amigurumi on here and these are the hook sizes that she uses most often. But um, I just thought this was really interesting since we had had this big discussion <laughs> among several of us on YouTube about what sizes are available in the U.S. versus the U.K. and, you know, calling them letter sizes versus numbers or millimeters or yah yah. But here you go. I can look at that. And Crochet Cabana has a second page um, that I invite you to check out too. And down at the bottom of this second page, it gives you a bunch of links to specialized crochet hooks. For example, these different um, types of wood, cherry and maple and you know different things like that. And they're carved fancy handles, which for whatever reason make me think of Harry Potter wands. Um, these are some handcrafted maple crochet hooks, you know, but regardless, just read down at the bottom of these. She also gets a lot more information on the tiny steel hooks that um, you use for certain projects like crochet thread or whatever. Very interesting stuff. Now we probably think of plastic hooks as being the cheapest and the least desirable. And these are some boy, very inexpensive uh, set here. The plastic itself is even kind of flimsy. I mean, I can literally bend it. But I don't want this to be confused with the Susan Bates Luxite. It's a type of plastic, but it's a much fancier plastic, Luxite. These, I don't think I can get a good shot of them. You can even see the seaming of the plastic right here where it came out of the mold. You don't see that at all on this Luxite. They're extremely smooth and one of my preferred hooks, actually. I think I've shown these before. Um, these are, I got these from Knit Picks, but they come under all different sorts of names. Um, Dreams is the last name that I can remember that they had them. Uh, the multicolored. The wood is so smooth and it's, it's just a wonderful hook. Let's get this paper here so we can see it a little bit better. You see the chinny chin chin part that I talk about, liking a deep chinny chin chin part that goes up in there? It has it, but it's such a rounded head that it's not really my favorite. I really like a pointier head, like a Susan Bates. Here's another family of hooks that I do like a lot, and these are some cheap bamboo hooks that I got from Amazon. I think I paid a grand total of like, I don't know, $10 for the whole shebang. And they're actually good. I like these hooks. They have that deep chinny chin chin that I talk about. They have a pointy head. Um, they are also, 
I like a bamboo hook because it creates drag. So if you have a real slippy slidey yarn, um, then I'll grab my bamboo hooks. Now when I first started crocheting, I got these um, plastic hooks that are the larger sizes because I needed some larger sizes. And it just so happens to be that they are glow in the dark. And why you'd want that, I'm not exactly sure. See, they really work. Ooh. Sorry, Clover Soft Touch uh, brand. So um, it's not, now my favorite hooks are Susan Bates, and it's not, it does have kind of a pointy top, but it doesn't have that deep tuck in area, I don't know what to call that, uh, like Susan Bates has. So it's not my very favorite. It also has one of these short shanks, but I do like these hooks, and, and I ended up getting a whole set of them um, after I had ordered this one. Because just for me, I don't grip tightly at all when I crochet. I, I hold it kind of like this and I'm rolling it around as I work. So it's not a lot of wrist action for me. So um, the handle is kind of irrelevant for the way that I hold it. Sorry for the noise in the background. And of course, I can't forget my Susan Bates aluminum hooks, with that, which I do use a lot. The only argument, and I have the whole set, they're just in various projects right now, but I do, right underneath that part right there is kind of, it's not really smooth. Um, it doesn't cause a problem by any stretch of the imagination, but there's just something about it that I wish it was just a little bit smoother under there. But um, I love the fact that they're different colors because I've sort of memorized what, what size is what color, and um, you can grab it at a glance. And if you find yourself with some favorite hooks, like those multicolored dreams that I have, that don't have the sizes written on them, then you'll need one of these. Um, which is a gauge tool and it has these holes here that you can use for knitting needles or crochet hooks that tell you what the millimeters are um, to see what size hook you're going to be using which is very important. I thought that was some great information those two sites provided. I thought I wanted to share that with you so I hope you find it helpful. Bye!